Things out a grounded compressor. Somewhere in that box. But it's brand new. Easy job for the day. Little small compressor. So I diagnosed this compressor about two months ago and uh, just now getting approved. Now look at the little frog. Hey, you gotta go, buddy. So I'm gonna show you where it's grounded. Might not be able to get that much footage. And it was only like 40 PSI when I hooked up my gauges. I'm gonna run up there and make sure we don't have no solenoid, but we might. Might be solenoids on there, I ain't sure. But you seen that frog, could it it's like a big old nature course out here, a museum or whatnot. Beautiful and peaceful. So I might go back in the woods when I get ready to pull a vacuum, go walking. I'm a country boy. Anyway, so I did get a good ground right here. Get that good ground right there. Touch one of the leads. You can see it's already buzzing. So another lead. Go to that one. You should have nothing should be having continuity to ground. Check it again. That's 0 0.934. Look at that 2.6. And another thing I noticed on these units, I put a quote in. They, all of them have filter dryers. All of them got filter dryers uh, at the air handler. They small, but they, I mean, it'll double it up. It may not hurt, but I, I put a quote in to uh, get them out of there. say I've been to this site one time just to diagnose that unit I think I changed the blower motor out here too though so I just don't remember if they had solenoids or not no they don't see all of them had these little filter drives they so small they might not hurt nothing but I guess the contractor did that for a reason but uh, I'm gonna either scrape pipe it out there and put me a filter dryer, but I'm gonna take that filter. I got one filter dryer. So the one that I'm doing, I'm gonna take, cause I'm not gonna replace both of them. Yeah. This the guy here. 
Nah, I'm trying to make sure these units don't have filter dryers on there. I mean, uh, solenoid valves on the inside. Look like they don't. Hey, do you know anything about the, the April maintenance? Is that, is that today too or no? Uh, like I said, I got another guy coming, so I think he he I think he here to do the maintenance. Oh, he's maintenance your compressor. Yeah, because actually they had me scheduled to uh, do the maintenance this week. But uh, then we, we had some online classes I had to do. Yeah. So I told them I was gonna come uh, Monday and do, do the maintenance out here. But uh, look like they sending him out here to take care of it. Yeah, for some reason, Brian wanted it all done one day. I mean, yeah. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I think they... I don't know if y'all noticed, but it had a filter dryer right here. So I just scrape pipe that. Use my here more swagger tool to because these are the filters that came with the unit. And I uh, did some research on it. That Raywall valve right here was filled and installed. So I don't know why they uh, put that filter dryer right there. But these little small filter dryer is the uh, same one come with the unit. So I'm gonna go at the air handling and install that. So if you have a half inch socket, you can use your drill for these hits. I'm about to see what I can do to unbend that. All right. So I can't do this with one hand, but all I'm gonna do is uh, use I wish I would have seen it was bent before I screwed it in.
rhyme. Go to the air handler, take that other filter out. Should be good. Front chain color on me. All right, so let's see how I am going to take this filter dryer out here. Don't want to burn this sight glass. I, best way to cut it out. I gotta make sure I got enough copper to, to bend it. Really don't want to sweat it out because if it got any contaminants in the filter, and spread it out the system. But uh, I got a little nitrogen purge on there, so I don't think, uh, so I think I'm just gonna burn this in out. Shouldn't, shouldn't take long. So I won't have much heat. I'm not gonna have that much heat on there. Yeah, so I don't think I contaminate the system. So I'm gonna pop it out real quick. Like I say, cause I don't wanna, uh, I might even burn both parts out. I don't wanna uh, make this look bad and bent. make it look decent. Like I say, this is gonna be real quick. Let me see, you see that. I, 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 I hope this is the right one. There's 5A. Yeah, I don't, that nice and pretty, I don't see any smoke at all, so. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, unsweat both of them. Yeah. It ain't take but two seconds. It ain't even smoking. So I was going to cut them, but it'll be all right. So we want to make sure my arrow facing the evaporator. And now I'm already pissed because uh, now that I take this dryer out, this dryer, uh, look how big that is right there. Got a 3.8 right here. This look like 5.8. See, they put their ray wall valve down at the condenser, and this the original piece. Should have checked it before I, uh, should have went on just checked. I can't still sweat that in. Just beat it up right there, but uh, get that there. Ah, oh, da, 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 da. See, this one got three eight on both man. All right, let me see what I got down in my truck. I'm gonna have some little copper fittings in here. I need, I know I ain't got no reducers down there. So if I ain't got that, I'm just gonna put a, just fill it in. Why? 
anyway, so. Got a little reducer that I'm gonna stick in there. Yep, stick that reducer right on in there. And everything gonna go smooth. Since this on the inside, I would say I want to want to try to make it look as clean as possible. Definitely don't need to burn up no dryer. I really don't want to burn up that dryer uh, since it's on the inside. Should have got a rag or something. But I, but I shouldn't be too low.
dry. Oh, I say it ain't the cleanest, but uh, but uh, for what I was working with, didn't have a, the right uh, filter dryer. I'm cool with it. Let me clean it up a little bit more right here. Make it look a little better there. So, uh, like I said, I got the compressor changed out. I got my filter dryer put in. Um, when I connected my gauges, I had like 30 PSI. So I'm just gonna make sure um, I don't have any leaks. So I'm gonna put, put about 150 PSI nitrogen in there once I get ready to uh, do a pressure test on it. Put about 150 to see if it goes down. And uh, first I'm going to uh, leak check my joints, you know, with about 10, 15 PSI, make sure I don't have any leaks everywhere I will. While I uh, put the spray pipe on the uh, liquid line. And I'm gonna check my wells right here and my wells at the compressor on the discharge and the suction, make sure I don't have any leaks. Then I'm pumping up to about 150 PSI, make sure it don't, don't, uh, Make sure it don't go down any. Then I'll probably put about the rest of my tank in there. About 400 PSI. Just to make sure, uh, and I'm gonna let that hold probably after to after lunch. Just to verify I don't have any leaks and then I'll go ahead and just pull a vacuum on it. So I'm just hoping, you know, we don't have any leaks at this coil or the condenser coil out there. I don't know if it needs to be changed there. All right. So if I, like I say, the job was quoted to change the compressor because the compressor is grounded. So if I do a pressure test and it don't pass my pressure test and it look like we have some leaks, I will have to uh, put another quote in to do a leak search. And uh, this, this is like a government property. So even if I do have to put a quote in and do a leak search, it, it can be another month or so before I can even come back out here and do a leak search on it. You know, if it was up to me, I'd go ahead and try to find it, but that ain't how it works. So, but we'll see. It, but in, in it, if, it, if it's something this obvious, I can just go, cause it probably on one of them wells out there when they put their ray wall valve in there. It's probably leaking on one of their well. So, but if it's something I can just solder up, don't have to replace no parts, or if it's not in the evaporator or the condenser coil, I'll just go ahead and uh, repair the leak and won't even say nothing about it. But all right. Right 
So that's that's an easy fix. Look like they might might not have a uh, Schrader core here, sir. So. Pretty good right there too. Alright, well that's an easy fix. Alright, so I released the charge. So instead of just trying to tighten that one up, I'm just gonna replace the uh just replace the valve. Alright, so so I had to put some nylog on that uh straighter valve cap out there because the straight straighter stem it's scripted out. So, I'm gonna have to put a note on there and tell them don't use that, that vial. And I'm gonna write a quote. So I can say it's a government job. It could be six months before they even prove that. So, just gonna make sure we don't got no leaks and that holds up. So they can at least have some air. Oh, yeah, it look like we good there. Check both sides real good. All right. So I, I don't have any leaks, but I'm still going to, uh, like I said, I, I, I'm confident that it was leaking out that, uh, that vial stem so I'm going to uh, put me about 300 psi as much as I can and hold it for about an hour and then I'll pull it back in. Wow. ABB drives I, coronavirus now but you go to Rossler about once a month, they hold a uh, ABB class in Houston, Texas. That's the address and phone number. It's a good, good little course. Uh, but they show you exactly how to troubleshoot these and set the parameters on the ABB drive. So you can get them a call, even if you're out of state and y'all use ABB drives. It's worth, worth going to this uh, class. Like I say, they use a holder. All right, who is that? I don't know if they run into a fight or from a fight. Either that's a little boy or he a giant. I think that might be the Austin guy. I like stuff like this. Just think about what they doing. That was probably in the 1800s or early 1900s. We got the dog. I thought it was. It's just, it just represents the average family that had to escape it. Oh, yeah, they're escaping. Yeah, I figured they wasn't fighting. They're they running from yeah. something. But, huh? but it's, it's inaccurate. Mm. It's inaccurate. Mm. Her husband wouldn't have been with her. Huh. When, when they, are y'all familiar with the runaway scrape? No. Remember that from, from? Mm. Okay, so on March 27th, when the Alamo fell, Sam Houston said, you need to burn your city to the ground mm -hmm. and get to San Jacinto. Mm -hmm. So Gonzalez and San Felipe did, right? In doing so, they had to start a militia because they had just lost 183 plus a week yeah. ago. In Goliath, they lost 400 people. Um, so all the men took the horses, the guns, and headed to go fight, and the women took the carts that usually were carried by an ox or a, a horse yeah. and had to travel with them. Yay. Now, get this, you know what we just found out? 1836 had more rainfall than 2017. The, uh, the, this river was a mile wide. Oh. The creeks were as wide as the rivers. Yeah. The average family lost their shoes in the mud 
four minutes into into their escape just across. So they were wow. Just and, and they had no That's shelter. Good. They had no food. Man. Um, and, uh, we actually obtained some uh, some writings from the United States Army who was positioned in Louisiana. They couldn't come into Texas. Yeah. So there was a famous trail, and it's about where I-12 is, the Vider, Beaumont area going into Louisiana. Over okay. Sabine. For 20 miles into Louisiana on this trail, there was nothing yeah, but Texas. got a baby dog. 20,000. Jeez. When will we talk that? Of nothing mm-hmm. but women and children starving to death in the rain with no cover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And walked there through all the thorns. And I mean, you ever seen a thorn on a wheat sash tree and ski trees? And, and Santa Ana himself, he said, uh, I don't know why they want Texas. Everything out there right, wants to bite you or scratch you. Or, <laughs> you know, we have the, the copperhead. Yeah, yeah. You know about the copperhead? Eight times more venomous than the rattlesnake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you get bit by a rattlesnake. You're like, oh, well, dude, these water, did, what, our cottonmouth, yeah. Bismarck, yeah. Mm-hmm. all those are way more. Got a good vacuum on, I mean, uh, a good charge on it. I say a good charge, I mean a, uh, it passed the leak test with the nitrogen for an hour, then drop any. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little vacuum on it. Make sure I put my crankcase heater back on. So I'm put 5.12, way in 5.12 ounces. And then I charge it up by sub cooling. Let's see what the sub cooling, yeah. So I asked for 10 degree sub cooling. So I'm just gonna put 10 degree sub cooling in there. That, that'd be a wrap. Said it had to burn the city down. Get up. So I'm just going over, going through some YouTube comments. Um, Cause Jimmy Brooks wanted me to make a short video. He said, uh, "I'll top, but I ha- have you ran across angry customers? If so, I have you handled them. Will you please do a short video?" Uh, far angry customers go, man. I probably had uh, out of hundred customers. Let's just say I may have two angry customers out of every hundred customers. They come rare, but they do come. And uh, I mean, a lot of time, I, I mean, I don't let it get to me, but I mean, at, at the end of the day, if somebody, you know, got an attitude or they angry for some reason, it's just gonna come back and hurt. We're not gonna go, uh, I'm not gonna go the extra mile for those type of customers. But I, I'm gonna give you an example. This happened uh, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, it was a warranty call and uh, I scheduled a guy for three o'clock and uh, at, I showed up, showed up at three o'clock on the dot, and when I go into the neighborhood and when I get at his house, I can see where he just uh, he just made it home. So I think he was 
trying to time me because it but his wife and uh, kids was already in there so uh, it's like a cul-de-sac so when i pull up uh, i wave he see me wave I'm in my truck marked up uh, i was in my pickup truck at the time and uh but he looked right at me he didn't wave or anything uh, so I go knock on the door, take him probably about, I hear a bunch of dog barking. I think they were trying to, you know, put him in the cage or whatever. But uh, knock on the door, off top, he, he get an attitude. You know, and I'll ask how you doing. I guess he's telling me the truth though. So, baby, but I'm just greeting. Hey, how you doing? You know, I'll introduce myself. And uh, so when I ask him, you know, how you doing? What, what he was like, what it look like? I'm, freaking sweating up in here 90 degrees up in here I'm like, I'm like well sir you know this is what I'm here for you know we're gonna see if we can take care of that so so I'm doing my troubleshooting he's sitting down uh, you know on his couch and every time I walk by they go to the condenser unit or whatnot uh, he, I hear him mumbling, mumbling mumbling up on his breath or whatever so I'm like, man, this dude here. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, go troubleshoot in the attic, and I end up finding he had a Honeywell zoning system, and the zoning board, you know, had 24 volts going to it, but the uh, the display was blank, it wasn't coming on at all. With no codes, it was just completely blank. It had a, a light in the back, like you know, like the green light, but it wasn't uh, didn't have any digits or anything on it. So I uh, and warranty companies, uh, they don't they don't cover uh, they don't cover control board or a, a zoning systems. Anything outside of the system, they don't cover. And I'm already knowing that in my head. But I told him um, I need to contact the uh, warranty company, and uh, I'm gonna call them first thing in the morning. But, and you say, how do I handle them? Like I say, if this dude wouldn't have had an attitude, all I had, I could have hooked up a thermostat going straight to his, uh, going straight to the board that's inside the unit and maybe manually open the dampers just so they can have cooling for the night. But this dude, but but the, but the attitude this dude, this dude would give me, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna even suggest that. You know, and I'm, and, and I told her I was like, uh, you know, the warranty company probably not going to uh, uh, approve this. You know, you, you're gonna need a, uh, you're gonna need this zoning board. You may have to pay out of pocket for it. So uh, anyway, I, I said, well, what a home, uh, the warranty company, they'll contact you hopefully first thing in the morning, and uh, and they'll contact me. You know, let me know. If they're going to cover it or not. So, uh, and I even got a message. He he, he called me uh, maybe like t 11 or 12 noon the next day. And I never I never told him that I, I was gonna uh, uh, get back with him first thing in the morning. I told him to warn the company would. But uh, his message right here. I'm trying not to uh, play his name, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. 4-6-6-7-0-7-2-4 Calling up on the uh, service call from yesterday um, We're supposed to hear something back from the technician this morning and It's almost noon, still haven't heard a thing uh, The house is hot as hell And would like to get some answers Thank you But it, see, that, that, that's just the type of attitude he had though Talking about the house is hot as hell Which he was but like I say, if you didn't have that type of attitude from the get go, uh, I could have got got him some cooling that night. But that's how I handled him. Okay, I'm not even going out of my way to, to even do this, especially as a warranty call. He wasn't. I mean, they they not gonna pay me to get get him no temp, temporary cooling for me to get my thermostat and and maybe stick it down in the return or just stick it in the ad, attic so it to keep running all the time. Um, so I mean, that, that's how I handled that situation right there. But anyway. I, I did end up going back. I picked up a, a Honeywell controller and, and installed it for him. But even if a homeowner, 
if y'all listen to this, be nice to the technician. Uh, because he he really didn't even have to put his family through that. Uh, if it's something wrong with your system or it's something wrong, you know, we are technicians. If it if it's nothing big, like if you need a new unit or something like that, of course I may not be able to get you cooling that night. But certain some things that we know how to bypass, you know, just to get you get you get you up and running for the night until we can come back and replace the part. But this guy right here, I mean, huffing and puffing, just his manner just bad. And his wife was super nice. But but well, well, him, she actually tipped me when I uh came back the next day and, and replaced the board. But uh you know, but but yeah, I mean that, that, that's just one of those situations, Jimmy. To answer your question. Yeah, we do. Like I say, I, I always try to keep a positive attitude anyway. I, I really don't let nobody else uh attitude determine how my attitude is gonna be because so you can be mean you can be nice but <clears throat> like i say it ain't affect me at all you know uh but like i say if if you nice i will and technicians know that too we'll try to go the extra mile to try to help you out you know the best way we can make sure you have some cooling uh going through the comments though i'm gonna read one more and uh, this one right here from AD 1985, Waco. So Waco, I'm, I'm assuming you're from Texas. That's Waco, Texas. I'm not sure, but uh, they say he say whenever you make a video on contractor license, can you please show the books? They sold me manual DJS books. Do we need those books? Um, I already made a contractor license uh, video, um, and I'm, I'm not familiar with your name, but if you, you can go back and search some of my videos. I have all the books that you need. I think it's four of them. I forget the name of them, but I know one of them like Mechanical Code, one of them a green uh, green book, one purple, I think one gray, like a, a National Gas Code, and uh, one is the Model Refrigeration Handbook. Um, but I, I have every one of them on there. I'll, and it's a law book, too, that you need. It's real short, thin. Um, but those are the four books you need. Go look at that video. Uh, I forgot how many minutes long, but I go through all the books that you need. And I got some things highlighted in those, too, I think. But uh, I think I did say I was going to do a more detailed video on how to get your contract license, you know, just step by step. But uh, before the... Uh, the DJS books, I never heard of that. I don't know what they're short for. Oh yeah, DJS books. Let me see, I don't know if you see it. DJS books. I, I don't even know what the D is stand for. I don't think you need those books. Like I say, if you're not in the state of Texas, if, if you're in another state, it may be a little different. But, uh, yeah, I hope that answers your question, though. Yeah, go back uh, to my earlier video on, uh, on, 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 on how to get your contractor license. And uh, and I got all four books on there. So I'll help you out, man. Yeah, go ahead and take that test. Good luck. Hey, get, get that contractor license, man. Uh, like I said, it's going to open a lot of doors for you. All right. So I just weighed in. About six and a half pounds. I think it said it, it holds 5.12. Yeah, five pound, 12 pounds. So I got six and a half in there, which should be good. So I can go ahead and put the fan back on here. Go ahead and get the fan back on there, put my gauges on, and uh, I'll charge it up at sub cooler. Turn that brake on.